How are we going everybody? I'm standing next to a couple of olive trees. Well, there's one here, one behind me. I planted these about a year and a half ago, I think it is. Um, probably more, but anyway, in these pots. They've had one prune only, so needless to say, they've overgrown it, and this is not what I want to create here. Now, I'm not trying to grow these into a, a ball, and I want to turn them into a topiary, which is pr probably the easiest thing you can do in this circumstance, but rather, it's almost like a bonsai. I want to create a small version of a large, typical olive tree that you have in the garden, where you have the open vase shape, and you've got your lateral branches coming out and forking out again. Needless to say, I'm going to have to work hard on these ones again, take them right back, but that will actually be good for the plant so the, the roots will get a little bit of relief there there won't be as much to look after and look at the bottom as well we've got some suckering going on there so that's a typical scenario you could say with almost every plant they'll grow on top but they always grow from the bottom as well if there's something not quite right now this one needs a good prune so the first thing I'm going to do is look at it and suss out which branches I want to keep and which ones I don't I want an open vase shape, shape in the middle I don't want it congested up here so you can see I started working on that there and you can see now I've got a branch that's coming inwards here with this one growing back over the top well through the middle that automatically is the first branch so you can see I'm going to take this one out completely it's overlapping there we are there sitting on that growing inwards we want them to all grow outwards so the first cuts there so let's open up the middle take any dead disease or damaged wood I'm using my Lowy's number one for those who want to know what sort of secateurs I'm using. These are probably, yeah, well, there's a, a couple of favourites I have there. As a bypass, as a anvil, sorry, that doesn't do a bypass. As an anvil pruder, it's fantastic. It's great for large branches. Just quickly showing you, see how the top blade sticks out in front of the little one? That's because as you close it, it does a slicing action at the same time. So it takes a lot of pressure out of your hand, the grip. You don't have to squeeze as hard as you would with a normal secateur or bypass. It doesn't have that angle slicing uh, ability. All right, take out. See, look at this. I don't, this is my concern. This one has to be tied down now because it's growing straight up. This is a great branch here, but it's growing straight up. So I've got to tie it down. Now, let's take out the inwards here, we don't need that. I don't want it to be, we'll leave, leave that little one. This branch here, take it out. Look at the height, see I've just taken one branch off. I thought before I start getting into the middle of it, because there's so many there, let's take some of the height off so we can get a little bit of an open feel about it. There's too many branches growing up. I don't need that many. If I leave all these in place, I'm gonna end up with another bushy olive. So all this is going to come out. I'm going to cut that to a stub there for now. Bring these right down. And we're going to work our way back into the shaping. This way we can get a better view of what's going on in here. What we want to keep, what we don't want to keep. Yeah, I'm just cutting anywhere. Generally about half. Not perfectly measured. All right. Now, if I was to leave this like this, it'll start bushing out. And eventually I'll be bringing out my hedge shears and hedging the whole plant and turning it into a topiary. I don't want to do that. So I want to open this up. Now, if I was doing a bonsai, I'd have a wire on this, bringing it out here somewhere like that. So that one there will give me a better shape. Get rid of that. Cut that shorter. Get rid of all these. I don't, well, yeah, I don't need all these at the moment. Just going to cut them short for now and we'll thin out some of them every second one, I suppose which is good. Bring that back down to a length. There's too many here. No, we don't need all that like that. It's really personal choice and taste here at the end of the day, folks. There's no, well, there is a right and wrong, but really if I take it a little bit shorter than I would normally, and don't worry about an olive tree, they, you can cut it back to a stump. I mean, a trunk, not completely to the ground. Well, you can to the ground as well, and they'll sucker up again exactly like this. You'll get this little bushy growth coming on at the bottom, which you can turn into a little bonsai if you like. Um, in this case, I'm not doing that. Now, that's got to lean that way. I'm not happy. That's why I'm holding this branch here. I'm going to get a bit of string and tie this down and weigh it down to the ground. Now, we'll get rid of all that. We're going to take this inner one, shorter than the outer one, and bring this one right down because it's too high. So we worked on that. We will leave that there for now, cut that there, that's too long. So we create that shape there. That's way too long for me. That can come back a little bit as well. That's got to come back. I'm creating a structural shape to my liking. Everybody does their own. Now, pretend that's leaning down. That there 
is annoying me, but I haven't got anything else coming out here. That I need that to go there, so I can probably shape that to that direction. Remove these lower ones because they're too close to the center for me, like that. And weigh that down as well, and then I'll get around here and there's too much going on there. That's too long. Bring that right back down. That's got to come back. It's already pushed out too far, actually further. That's better. That there. Some of you are probably screaming and saying, what are you doing? Right, let's get rid of this. We don't need that there. There's too many there. Let's work on this one here. That's way too long. We'll take the tip off that so it doesn't stretch out. All right, and now we've got this issue. I need a branch in here, so that's got to be tied down to there. Now, if I look back and reflect on it, we're getting there. This is still a little bit long on this side. This has got to come out completely. See that long one there? No good. That hasn't been cut back either properly. All right, take these back, get rid of that. I don't need that at all. And that's going to come back. If I don't cut it back enough, it's going to grow here, right? So you say, oh, look, that's long enough. But no, because look where the growth's coming from. It's going to come from here and it's going to push out down there. I don't want it to go over there. I want it to stay over here. So this is growing in the wrong spot already. It's growing straight up. We'll get rid of the yellow leaf. There's the other growth there. So we're going to cut it back to here. All right, so there's a growth there. There's one over there. That's where it's going to push from. Over here, this one here is going to push where, wherever the leaves are, but mainly here too. So that's what we're doing. We can take that a little bit further back. Now up here, this is way too long, and I don't want it to grow from here up there. It's already too long. Let's cut it back. Get ready for the big surprise now, folks. Now as we get closer to the final shape, we can see what we need to do. Now looking at this, this one in here can actually come out. It's growing two up, straight up that is, and I can't bring it right out there. And if I do, it's going to mean nothing to me at the end of the day. So I'm going to try and cut this out completely. There we are, that's gone. That's a bit better now, that comes down to there. We'll cut that back to a little bit and remove that there. And we're nearly done, I think. Now what we've got to do is go around and check all our cuts. And what I'm talking about is that. Get rid of the yellow leaf. That's just black spot, that's the, the weather change. What we're talking about here is the cut there now. See the last node there, or bud? We want to cut just above that on the, on the same angle approximately. So we're cutting it on an angle going away, um, not going towards the bud. But so the longer side is closer to the bud side. So that's what we're going to do going all the way around. And there are pretty much buds everywhere along here. There's one just there. We'll just clean that up a bit, like that. And we'll just do the same thing as we go around. Find your last bud, cut it on the angle, clean it up. Even if you leave it a little bit long, folks, it's going to die back. But that's just going to trigger the enzymes in the plant to grow. So if the plant's healthy, that little dieback is, is going to stop at the last bud there. And then from there on, it should grow up for yourself. So, and that only depends on how clean your secateurs are and always spray them before you start pruning and always spray them when you go to the next plant. There you go, folks. So we've done the one. And actually, quite honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. That's got a really good shape in it. Have a look at this one here. This one needs to be done as well. I'm not going to do this on camera for you guys, but I'm just going to talk about the difference between the two because I seem to be getting a lot of comments, people saying, whoa, you killed the tree, it's not going to grow back. If you don't prune the tree, it won't grow back. It'll just keep growing. And what's going to happen is it's just going to grow straight up to the sky and see how wispy that is now. Now you can leave that. All these little branches or multiple branches you see here, they'll grow. They'll thicken up. They'll toughen up. And somewhere along the journey of the tree's life, you might decide to prune it and bring it back down a little bit because you're too scared to prune your trees. It's like a haircut. You don't cut your hair. It just gets matted long and really, really rough. Whereas this here, when you do prune it or when you do get a haircut, everything's nice and healthy. And it's the same with the trees. Now, I'm going to have a beautiful tr structured tree there that's going to have that bonsai semi-dwarf look about it. And no, I'm not going to leave this one here to grow the way you like it to grow at home. No, this is going to get pruned as well. So you can enjoy your fruit climbing a ladder or enjoy your fruit and your tree at a more sensible level and be able to harvest the fruit at arm's reach so you're not going to be climbing ladders. Now you need to do this from young so you, you can go up to some older trees and start shaping them because it's going to take a long time and there's, they're more prone to disease and die back at that stage. Whereas a young tree you can and it's not just the olives. The olives actually you can cut at any age but other trees are like uh, ap apricots and even apples and that. There are certain times of the year that you need to prune them so go out there and you're right in the cusp of it or actually you should have done a prune already 
as they're dropping their leaves and get ready in the next couple of months to get into them and clean them up properly. Now I'm pruning this now because I can still see new growth coming on. No fruit on these olive trees. See the new growth there? I don't need it to push up energy at the top of the plant anymore. It's going to get cut off anyway, so let's focus on bringing the energy back down where it needs to be um, and get rid of the suckers as well. And then go around and give it a top dress with superfood and black grit and give it a good watering and then sit back and wait for spring to come so you can enjoy a beautiful spring growth and maybe some flowers and fruit as well. Check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Everything you need for your garden at respectful, discounted prices from me, Vasili. Marisi.